Hey folks, Joe Valley here with the Quiet Light Podcast. Thanks for joining us for what might be the third or fourth episode in 2021. Uh, today's podcast is brought to you by Quiet Light. We are a uh, online M&A firm specializing in online business transactions. Our largest transaction in uh, 2020 was 25 million. We had another one that was a close second to that, our lowest at about 16,000. And I'm no longer the big dog on the team. We've got a couple of guys that uh, have uh, outshined me by a long shot, Walker and Brad. If you haven't connected with them on larger transactions, please do reach out. Today's guest is actually pretty impressive. He was the number one salesperson for the Long Island Press at 11 years old. Claim to fame right there. <laughs> there you go. He actually bought an ice cream truck at the age of 19. So this guy's obviously a serial entrepreneur. He's cleaned bathrooms. He was a shorter to cook and began his career as a financial planner after you know growing up and becoming an adult. That's the sign of a man that is eventually going to do some pretty amazing things. I, uh, I never want to go to his funeral and hear the eulogy because it's going to make me feel quite inadequate. I've been in that situation before and I leave <laughs> sad because I lost a friend, but also because I feel like I have to do more in my life. So this guy's name is Don Hennig. I hope I pronounced that right, Don. I didn't yeah. ask. I got it yeah, right. Good. good. And his real story, at least the adult one, is that he's flipped over 300 houses in his career. He also created a company that created and produced the 27th longest running Broadway show, Rock of Ages. He created and produced eight feature length film movies and testified before the House and the Senate at about 30 years old. And now he's on to his next adventure. It is pretty impressive and it's specifically for Amazon business owners. It's in the Amazon funding space. Akrumi is an Amazon funding business that helps Amazon sellers grow quickly increase and increase their profits. It's kind of weird. It's, this, this almost seems like it's too good to be true. So we're going to dig into it. There's no credit check, no monthly payments, no personal guarantees, no long-term commitment, zero interest charged, and no loss of ownership. Now, everybody out there that's running a, an e-commerce business, specifically in the FBA space, knows the biggest challenge that they face when they're growing like crazy, which hopefully you are, is running out of inventory and trying to keep up with growth and focus on that. Amazon offers money for that, but Akrumi is offering it in a better way. According to these guys, we're going to dig into it and hear more about it. Don and Rob Stanley are with us today. Thanks for joining the podcast today, guys. Our pleasure. Yeah. This is great. Glad to have you. Yeah. I, you know what? I, I, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll invite you to my funeral right over there. <laughs> I'm going to feel so, I have a lot of work to do before I leave your funeral and feel like a decent human being. You know, it's just, I, 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 <laughs> funny. I you know what? I literally, uh, it was 2018 and I, my, my best friend lost his dad and uh, went to the funeral in Georgia and I'm sitting there and Andrew's reading the eulogy and I'm thinking, God damn it, I got to do more with my life. His dad was incredible. <laughs> and, and so I, I'm sure a lot of people are going to feel very inadequate when they go to your funeral. But let's, let's have that, you know, many, many decades out into the future. So <laughs> tell me let's about hope. a crewmate. Talk to me about uh, what you guys have put together on this next big adventure of yours. You know, I got to tell you, you did a great job there explaining a crewmate. Uh, and, and I was ready for the mic drop. You know, that was... Uh, I could have just ended it right there. There you yeah, go. Yeah, really. I think we should just dot com. We're done. <laughs> but, you know, you, you brought up the Amazon lending. And it's really an interesting thing. And, I, and I'll just touch on that for a second. Uh, you know, we did the analysis of how a seller can grow with a Krumi versus Amazon versus the other options that are out there. And in every scenario, a seller can grow faster with a Krumi than anything else. The Amazon is a good uh, Amazon loan is a good thing. The thing is, if you took out a hundred thousand dollars from the Amazon, you're going to end up paying interest. You're going to end up making monthly payments. And what happens is every month they uh, basically you you get this money, right? You make your money and you've spent all your time making this money. And every month you've got to give a cut of that money back to Amazon. Well, they just take and it. This goes. They don't even give it to you. They just take it. Exactly. Right, from your exactly. Yeah. And so do all the other funding companies, right? I mean, payability, sellers or uh, seller funding, they all want that chunk every month. And the problem is that it doesn't necessarily give you a chance to grow because now you don't have that full amount of profit that you made plus what you invested to be able to go buy more inventory and grow the company. Right. And that's where we kind of come in and that's where we do a things different, right? Joe mentioned a whole bunch of things that we 
don't do, right? We don't charge interest. We don't, uh, uh, no monthly payments, that type of thing. So it may throw people off a little bit because they're like, well, are they just handing me money for free? I mean, are we just giving away money? Well, yeah, we kind of are. And so think in your head profit sharing. That's the best way to describe it is profit sharing. So I'll just give you a scenario, Joe. We're going to jump right in on how it works. And, and hopefully Don uh, can jump back in here. Oh, so, I hope, yeah, I, hope I, I get it and understand it, but I'm going to ask some yeah. dumb questions along the way. Before you That's do okay. that, before you do yep. that, Rob, I, I want to know, let, let's establish what you guys have done here. You haven't raised a few million dollars in funding because <laughs> people think, well, Amazon's got lots of money. They're going to give me some dough. Yeah. Don, Don, you went out and you raised, what, $100 million? $100 million. $100 million in funding. Yeah, hundred million in funding from our first uh, opportunity, our first uh, appointment, if you will, with a hedge fund in New York City. You get some uh, friends in powerful places. Then. It turns out I do know the, the the guy who who runs the place, who's a multi billionaire, and he's always wanted to work with me. And you know, so the door was open to pitch this, but we didn't expect that you know we'd walk away with such a, a large amount plus an investment in the company as well. Okay. So yeah, we have a hundred million dollars to invest. And and when when did you uh, start Acrumi? How long have you guys been in business? We, we it's we're on our second year. The first okay. year, all we did uh, is to give out money. We had no system. We had no underwriting criteria. Mm -hmm. We literally went to sellers and gave them money with no requirements. We wanted to see how this would work. Yeah. And it worked out well. And uh, we only got the hundred million and uh, less than a year ago now. And we only have our system built for about uh, maybe the last four months. So now we're starting to grow. Now we're in scale mode. And so early stages, people get to know about you. And Rob, you came on last year as a CMO. Is that right? Great. Now we're swamped. People come. Yeah, Robbie's our CMO. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I came on board a couple months ago, uh, very end of uh, 2020. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things. I actually, and there's a funny story to this, uh, Joe, if we don't mind going off on a tangent slightly. So a couple months before I came on, I actually had Don on my podcast and Don and I were talking on LinkedIn and he's, and he was trying to explain to me how Acrumi works. And I'm going, well, doesn't, I mean, everybody provides loans. And he's like, no, 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 this is not like loans. This is much different. This is growth capital. He kept saying growth capital. Mm. And I'm like, growth capital, that still sounds like everybody else. And he's like, no, trust me. So Don got me on a phone call, which is very hard on LinkedIn. You, you got to impress me. Because as you know, Joe, we all get hit on LinkedIn many times with sales pitch, sales pitch, sales pitch, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking Don's just sales pitching me, you know, but I'll give the guy a minute. So I get on the phone with him and uh, he starts explaining it to me. And, and again, we'll go into it a little bit later, but he starts explaining to me and I'm like, hey, this is really cool. This is really different. Let's get you on the podcast. So I get him on the podcast and uh, him and I just started, you know, going back and forth and talking a lot about how it works. And at the very end, because uh, I don't want to give it away because we got more, more to talk about, but uh, at the very end, Don and I ended up talking for a good 45 minutes after, and I was just super impressed on how different Acrumi is. It really puts the seller first, and there's not a lot of uh, software slash uh, uh, programs slash uh, services out there that put the seller first, right? The Amazon seller first. And I was like, just blown away at how different this was. And I told Don, I said, hey, I said, you know, I said, who does your marketing? Because I'm looking at his social media while he's on and I'm like, you're missing this, you're missing that, things aren't right. You know, why don't people know about this? And Don's like, funny you mentioned that. We are looking for a marketing person. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, you know, Don and I ended up talking quite a few more times after that. And uh, so I ended up actually pursuing them. Uh, for a job because I just, I love what, what we're doing over here. Good. At yeah. And I'm glad we've connected. Let's jump into it. Let's talk about, you know, we've got an audience of FBA business owners and they need more capital. They need more, there you go, Don, growth capital. That's right? right. Either to hire employees or do more marketing or buy more inventory. I'm sure they can use it for all of those things. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but mostly they want to buy inventory. Mostly they do so, want to buy know, inventory. Everybody yeah. I'm talking to, Joe, they're, they're all, you know, looking to buy more inventory. They're creating new products. They're, they're growing and they want to grow in 2021 in a big way. All right. And walk us through the process. How does it work? We've got somebody out there that's got a business that's three years old. They're doing a million to five million in revenue and they need some more inventory. They just can't keep up. Give us uh, an idea of what the process is and what they do. Okay. Uh, real simple. 
uh, they just go to our website and they fill out a, a, a brief questionnaire with like, you know, takes maybe three minutes, ask basic questions, how much business they do, how long they've been in the business, basic things. And with that, we give them an instant uh, uh, proposal. So it's a, a good estimate of what we'll do, you know, overall. Then we ask for access to their uh, uh, so central to the MWS. We pull down their inventory. We match their cost with it, which takes, you know, same day pretty much. And we give them a formal proposal, exactly what we will do, broken it down with details. And then we get on the phone with every single one of them. And truthfully, I get on the phone with almost every single one of them because I want to make sure everybody understands completely what this deal is before they get in. One thing I don't ever want, because it's new, it's different. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to ever come back and say, I didn't understand that. Not a chance. Anybody that's going to be in our program understands. And then we fund the account. There you go. Okay. So, yes. so everybody understands that with Amazon, they, they're going to reach out to you. They're going to say, Hey, look, you qualify for a loan of this amount. Do you want it? You take it. And essentially I think it's what anywhere from 12 to 15% interest rate is the way people yeah. understand it. And that Amazon's going to take the money out of your account before it's deposited. Right. What is it going to cost me as a business owner? If I need a half a million dollars mm -hmm. to buy some inventory and grow or $50,000, what's it going to cost right. me? We, let me gonna, let me jump in here and I'll sure. do this one, Don. Sure. This scenario. So so let's let's go with a hundred thousand. Let's say we qualified you. Your capital is a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, Joe. So and, and it, it'll be relative the way I give the example. Okay. So you come to us. We basically said, hey, you qualify up to a hundred thousand dollars. Now you don't have to take that full amount. Okay. So you have a hundred thousand in capital uh, from your inventory, your FBA seller, and you have a hundred thousand in inventory. And we say, hey, we'll give you another hundred thousand. Okay, so you have a decision to make. Do you want to oh, take that minute, full hundred thousand? I'm going I'm to interrupt and ask dumb questions all along the way. Okay. So go for it. You said I've got to have. So I've got I've got assets worth a hundred thousand dollars right now in, yep. in in cash and inventory. Okay, and so now Correct. you're going to loan me that same amount, or up Correct. to that same amount. Okay, up to that same amount. All right. Okay, so so if we go at the full amount, we'll go the full amount. If you decide, hey, I want that entire hundred thousand that we're offering you. That's fine. So look at it this way. If, if you have 100,000 in capital, the cash, the inventory, and we just gave you 100,000, that's 50-50, right? We, we technically just gave you 50% of, of what, uh, it's a 50-50 at that point. Okay. Of my, of the total capital. Of the total, of yeah. The total capital, not the value of, the of total my capital. business, but of okay. the total no. capital. All right. Yeah. Okay. So just keep this in mind. We, we never at any point want to be more than 50% of the total capital. Okay. okay. So if you decide to go to that full max of the $100,000 or 50%, what we would ask for is 25% of the uh, net profits on the items sold. Now, net profits, and Don, if I miss something, let me know. Yeah, let's define Cost that, of goods sold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cost of goods sold and PPC. Okay. So and in all Amazon. Animal, and, and all of Amazon fees. Third party platform fees. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So okay. that's after cost of goods sold, Amazon fees, and your PPC, which we know everybody needs to have advertising to get things going. Okay? Yeah, it's kind of gross profit, but you're adding in the, the, the advertising PPC fees. Yeah. All right. Now that might throw people off thinking, wow, that's a large percentage. Now, so 25% of that. In little. this situation, 25% of that figure is what you're looking exactly. at. Exactly. Okay. So people can yeah. do their own calculations, but let's hear it on that 100,000. Go ahead. 25% of how much you make. So it's not like your margin is 30% and we're taking 25%. Please understand that it's 25% of the profit you make. Okay. So if Gross you, profits. yeah, if at some yeah. point, let's say you make $10,000 profit, then we get 25% of the $10,000. If you make 30,000, then we get 10, we get 20, sorry, we get 25% of the 30,000. But it's also, and this is why we say, you know, we basically grow with you. Okay. We want you to succeed because if let's say whatever that is, that product's that you got and you only broke even, then we, we made nothing. And this is where it gets a little un, you know, different. If you mm. don't make money, we don't make money. Yeah, somebody could blow up their ACOS and you guys are sitting there not making any exactly. money, any, any money right now, right? But eventually you'll get your money back plus that, but how does it work? Well, we, we hope so, but, but just yeah. you know, what if a I year blow, ago. What, what if I blow up my ACOS, Don, and, hold on one and second. just break even and then I sell the business? But hold on one second. Yeah, well, then we didn't. Then we didn't earn anything. Okay. But right. uh, you know, this past year with COVID, 
you know, we have plenty of clients that couldn't send in any 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 inventory and started losing money mm. for a few months. We didn't make any money. They didn't owe us. They didn't owe us a penny. How'd your hedge fund uh, buddy feel about that? <laughs> He's like, what yeah. am I doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they did, but we told them what was going on. Yeah. They didn't like it. What ended up happening is during that COVID time, nobody can make payment. Okay, right. and and that's fine. If you can't make the payment, that's fine. What ends up happening? They weren't though, making is, any money. They didn't have yeah. any profit. Forget about payments. There are no payments. So that's a dramatic yeah. difference between Amazon and Akrumi. Is that it's Amazon's going to? They're going to take it no matter what. No matter, regardless of these profits. guys, okay. these guys would have been put out of business. Yeah, in a normal situation. Okay. All right. So let's let's continue, Rob. I want to. I, yeah. I kind of want to get a handle on, and I know it's going to be hard, but I'm sure I'm not the first one to ask. Ultimately, dumb it down. Amazon, it's going to be twelve to fifteen percent yeah. interest rate. I want to dumb it down to what's it really going to cost me? Yeah. Uh, so let's back up that guys. scenario slightly because I want I want to cover this a little bit more. Okay. So you you've been approved for that hundred thousand. You know, we we went through the scenario that you took the full hundred thousand, which is a 50-50 uh, of the capital, and then twenty five percent of the net profits. Okay. So let's bring that down a little bit. Let's say you decide, hey, I don't need that full hundred thousand right now. Let's go with fifty thousand, which is approximately at that point about thirty three percent is what what we now have, right? Okay, because I've got a hundred so in capital and right adding fifty. Yep. Okay, so got you it. took yeah your your hundred thousand plus the fifty you took from us. Yep, is about thirty three percent. So we get half of that. So call it a what about sixteen point five percent of the net profits now. All right. So whatever you take percentage wise, it's always half of that for. The profits. Let me, so let is me, that part clear, Joe? Yeah. And it changes monthly. It does. It, it changes monthly depending upon the capital. the capital. Okay. Capital. Good. Yep. So you're you, each month you're uh, getting updated reports on capital, meaning inventory value, mm -hmm. cash on yep. hand. Okay. Um, let me just. Uh, there's there's a timing and logistics challenge here sometimes. So tell me when your gross profit split starts. Is it once I get the money, or is it after? the inventory lands at FBA that took 12 weeks for me to order. Which one is it? Did you understand that question? Uh, or, am I, or am I just start talking in two. circles? Yeah, go ahead, Don. You see? Yeah, now I got you. So, so we, we, the first month, we don't earn any profit. We don't take anything. Nothing in the we first month. We start in the second month. So the first 30, nothing for the first month. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so there is a- And it starts. Yeah. Is, is that the same with Amazon or is there no delay with Amazon? No, there's no delay with Amazon. No, no delay. Stuff. You take 100 grand from Amazon, you start paying it back yeah. in so your just, next payroll cycle. So, so think about it. I hope I don't freeze again. But if, if you took out an Amazon loan today, by the time you got to the third quarter and fourth quarter, when you really need that money, it's going to be down to maybe a third, right? You know, okay. think about it. You're going to be paying it back every month. So right. when you really need the money, you're not going to have it. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't re-up that until you're done. With us, you take money out today, you might get be flush with cash in a few months, you pay us down. We're going to have a smaller uh, profit percentage. In Q3 and Q4, you need more money. We're going to give you more money. And you're not going to be making any monthly payments. So our, our, our uh, capital is there for you when you need it. And when you're flush with cash, when it's right for you to make payments, you're going to send us money because it's in your best interest. All right. That's okay. the way it works. Yeah. It's, it's right. like so that it's your invisible prerogative. hand. It's you your prerogative it. to gotcha. if you want to pay us. All right. Keep going on the on the dumb yeah. it down to twelve to fifteen okay. percent versus you guys. <laughs> yeah. So wh whatever percentage ownership we are, it's half of that on the profits. Now, when I say, you know, hey, you sold it and you owe us, you know, twenty five percent back, it doesn't mean that at the end of that, you know, thirty, sixty, or ninety days, you got to make that payment. Right. So this is where it gets a little tricky. Okay. So Let's uh, let's go back to the hundred thousand dollars. You hundred thousand in capital. You took the full hundred thousand from us. Okay, that we would now share in twenty five percent of the net profits. Let's say after ninety days, you've sold all that inventory that came in, and you you got back the two hundred thousand dollars for both of us, and there's a profit involved, right? Whatever the profit is, you could turn to us, Joe, and say, hey. Instead of paying you guys that 25% right now, plus the 100,000 that I originally borrowed, I want to take that full amount and buy more inventory because, hey, we're taking off. Things are going good. Right. Q3 is coming up. Q4 is coming up. Mm -hmm. Let's take that whole thing. You still haven't paid us anything. Remember, no monthly payment, no interest. Right. We're with you. Go get it. Go Can buy I, more inventory. So now I've, I've got 
more capital in the bank, can I come back to you for more money before Absolutely. I pay you back? As long as, as long as we don't go over that 50% threshold. Gotcha. So okay. that's but, where that, like, if you took the first 50,000, came back and said, I need another 50,000, then we'd be fine with that. Yes. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to answer my own question that I've been asking. <laughs> and that is this 12 to 15% versus you guys. I really think it's apples to oranges, if you will. I, I feel a bit like you're uh, more of a partner, if you will, mm -hmm. in providing growth capital and giving people flexibility versus, uh, you know, a loan shark that you get money and that's all you get and you're going to get a high interest rate and you better pay it back. That's or, it. Or, you, yep. you know, you're going to go out of business. Now, with, with Amazon, uh, I think there was a recent change in their policy. You know, it was a good deal for uh, sellers for a long time. If they you know, took money and ended up uh, going out of business because they didn't make any profit and then couldn't order more inventory because they didn't have any cash because they're paying back the loan and COVID hit and things of that nature. I don't think there was any personal recourse. Uh, right. Is it true that, what are we talking, today's July, I'm sorry, yeah, I wish it was July. It was <laughs> January 6th, 2021. Did Amazon just change their uh, uh, policy to make it a personal guarantee or is it still just the company? Rob? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, just just recently in the last uh, several days here, uh, or you know, first couple of weeks here of uh, January 2021, they did change that now they do require a personal guarantee. Accrue Me does not require a personal guarantee, no credit checks, none none of that. So we we are going into business with you as a partner. Again, think profit sharing. We want you to succeed. We want you to be profitable. This is growth capital to keep growing, keep growing. I have a question. And uh, if the answer is no, maybe it's a, just a suggestion for you. But on, on Accrue.me, which is A-C-C-R-U-E, me.com, is there some sort of calculator that, you know, I can just plug in the numbers and sort of see what it's going to look like for me? Because I'm sure every uh, business is different, and that twenty five percent is going to be dram dramatically different. Is there is there is there something where I can plug in the numbers and sort of kick out what my, you know, cost is going to be? That's exactly yep, where we we suggest everybody to start. Is on our website. We yeah. have we do have a calculator. I really and didn't know that, folks. I had no idea. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't look think. <laughs> so yeah, there there is a calculator. Uh, Don cut yeah, out again. That's there great. Is a cal calculator on our site. So if you go yeah. to our website. Uh, it's right towards the top, not at the very top, uh, but right towards the top. You can click on it. It'll take you to our calculator. Put in what works for you. Put in how much are you looking for? You know, what are you looking to take out every month? Because everybody needs, you know, living. They need to live on money, right? I mean, <laughs> we don't do this for fun. Yeah. So we, you can even put in, you know, how much you need to take out to survive every month. And uh, it'll instantly adjust everything on the right for you. All the pie charts, all the uh, growth charts. Everything will instantly adjust for you, showing you, I think if I'm not mistaken too, Don, chime in on this, but it'll show you uh, also not using a crewmate versus a, using Correct. a crewmate. Yes. So if you just try to do it on your own right. and you know keep trying to go uh, versus getting that extra funding for us that could excel you, it will show you the uh, comparison in there. And uh, depending when you're listening to this, we are working on a calculator that'll show you against other third parties on how it'll look, uh, just not quite out yet, but coming very soon. Like how much you could grow with our capital versus Amazon or any other lending source. Excellent. Yeah. That's how confident again, we are. Again, a true growth partner versus yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, whatever else you want to call it. All right. So uh, assuming we stay at or below the 50%, what's the largest amount of money I can get from a crew me as an Amazon seller? Gosh, that, that's a good one. I, I don't think we have a limit right now. I, I know that we've funded- I can uh, get a hundred million? I, uh, I want it all. No, okay. <laughs> you don't have a limit right now. So For a hundred million, I think we're gonna fly so, out and have a meeting, Joe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let, let, me, let me just jump, chime in on that. Uh, yeah, we don't have a limit, but I would tell you that reasonably, it works up to about 500,000. And then we can grow with somebody like that higher. Okay. But when they come and they're much larger, like a $10 million guy, uh, it just hasn't worked well. You know, just 
Okay. You know, so our, our real niche, I'm going to say, is from a small guy, we'll go as low as $10,000. You're kidding. Really? $10,000. Yeah, so. And we did that on purpose. Wow, that's great. We that, wanted to this help. Is what they, that, that, that's when a, a, a seller really needs the funds Joe, is when they're small. And we want to help them. You know, I swear to God, we signed up three new people today. One actually a little bit lower than 10000 just because they're great and they have a great business and a great plan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And they've they've got a good plan, and what and happens is so that they're in. Uh, yeah, I'll right. take over, Don. So what happens is that there is kind of a sweet spot that works better, and we have done below the ten thousand. But Don's right; we we seem to find that people hit that growth right there. So let's just go slightly over uh, what kind of the minimum requirements are for a crew meet, okay? Because I think that's important. People know. So again, as Don said, uh, ten thousand dollars in capital is the minimum. Uh, we prefer that they've been uh, selling at least six months profitably on Amazon. Okay. okay. You also, uh, for right now, it's FBA only, but coming up soon is FBM, uh, and that'll be coming up soon, but FBA. Also need to be an LLC, or if you're selling, if you're out based outside the country, let's say Canada, but you're selling in the U.S. marketplace, as long as you have a U.S. LLC, and a U.S. Uh, tax ID number, we will also uh, look at giving you funding. So, so no S corps. Uh, no S corps at this time, no, unless but, you want are willing to be an LLC. Well, what's the? Well, to, uh, go ahead and so, technically in sixty seconds, tell us why. Yeah, go ahead, Don. So first off, the the sub corp can own the LLC a hundred percent. So okay. if you have a sub corp, you can open an LLC and own it. So it works well there. And the reason for it is with an S with an LLC you have an operating agreement. Mm -hmm. So we can adjust the operating agreement without owning your business. So we put ourselves in as the profit share partner. You're the equity owner. So you own 100% of the equity of the business. And you can't do that with a corporation. Okay. Uh, do you help with uh, the sellers? Let's say they're six months old, they've got one hero SKU and they want to launch another one. That's not exactly the same thing. Do you help with new SKUs and new product launches as well if I need inventory money for that? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that from here. So uh, nope. yeah, go ahead. what happens is, uh, no, we don't, but there is a way to do it. And we do get asked this a lot, Joe. Okay. And uh, so we're in the business of helping you grow with existing products. We're not in the business of putting up money to risk on new products that haven't been proven. But let me go through a quick scenario on the way you could use us to be able to fund your own new product launches. And that is, you could do it a couple different ways. You could either uh, it put us into existing products that you're already selling, you already have inventory on Amazon, and we would go in and become a partner on those existing ones. And let's say like that scenario, we gave you the you know $100,000. You could turn around and say, hey, I want to put you guys into these, but I'm going to, instead of me taking out, let's say you're just about ready to buy $50,000 of brand new inventory on a new product. What you could do is decide, hey, I'm going to keep $25,000 and out. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, let me 25. rephrase that. Yeah. If, if you were going to rebuy some more of the current inventory, what you could do is say, hey, you guys come in and partner with buying that new Im that current existing inventory with me, and mm -hmm. I'll take $25,000 out of the fifty dollars I was going to do and launch this new product on my own. Got now, it. once you've launched that new product, what, let's say you've got it going, Joe, for about three months, and you can prove to us that it is successful and, and it's making money, we'll come in and fund that also. So that, that's a one way you can do it. Or we come in with the existing products. You could start taking some of the profits off of those existing products that we're funding with you mm -hmm. and launch your, your new products that way. So okay. it's kind of a two-parter. So the simple clean <laughs> answer is no, but you get creative and the answer is yes. So that's, that's yes. awesome. What, what about anything outside yeah. of just you know offering money do you guys do anything else besides just you know lending on the 100 million uh, to folks or do you help in any other way you know we have a lot of experience my partner eric is... you got a little bit yeah, I, I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my partner eric's a lawyer he's a uh wharton grad you know smart son of a bitch i gotta tell you okay uh, but he's got all that kind of experience and we both have bought and sold many businesses and built many businesses. So we have helped many of our sellers on transactions, on legal documents, on things outside the business. 
And sometimes, Joe, it's truthfully, it's, it's motivation. Mm. Like I, I literally get on the phone with some of the younger sellers and I'll get on the phone with them every Friday and talk to them one on one and, you know, talk them through what, you know, what they're not doing. And sometimes it means they're not working their ass off when they should be, mm. you know, and, and there's things that you need to do. And, you know, sometimes they need a, an old guy to kick them in the ass. Yeah, I think I'm going to borrow some money just so that I can talk to you every Friday and get some advice. Uh, or just to encourage them in some ways. It's, it's yeah, important. Just, and, and that's the fun part of the business. We're here to help them grow. We love that. What about, look, we've been around the block a couple of times, right? And we know a lot of different Amazon sellers. Mm -hmm. uh, no matter what, in every sort of bushel, there's a bad apple, right? Um, when do you guys say no? Uh, to that? Is it, a, is it a gut feel that you're like, yeah, this doesn't add, add up? Or you're just looking at math and numbers and, and logic? A little bit of both. Uh, there were a couple that I can tell you personally that it was a gut feel. It, there was something wrong. Couldn't put my finger on it. Just something uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a firm believer in going with your gut. A uh, firm believer in it. And uh, so we're not doing those deals. You know, okay. got to be good people. Good people, yeah. good humans. Also, folks. Joe, the, if the yeah. margins aren't right, like if, if their profit margins are too low, we don't want to come in and hurt them. We don't want to come in and start taking, you know, our yeah. being partners with somebody who doesn't have enough margin. That just, yeah. that doesn't help them, right? If we come in and take some money at some point, not that we're taking it, but they, you know, need to give us money at some point or want to, mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to hurt them. They, we want their business to succeed. You know, what we'll usually do on somebody like that is tell them, hey, keep going. Keep building the business. When you get a little bit bigger, come back and see us. Or, you know, if you get new products that the margins are better on, come back and see us. All right. So you guys know what we do for a living here at Quiet Life, yeah. right? We, we help people grow their businesses through having people like you on the podcast. We share content. We've all built, bought, and sold our own online businesses. And now we've, you know, touched a half a billion dollars worth of online exits over the last few years. Um, what does a crew me do to help our clients, you know, really, I understand the scaling of the business, but talk to us about how it gives them a more valuable business to eventually exit, if you will. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll just I'll jump, jump in, in on real that. quick. <laughs> Go ahead, two of you want to jump in first, at the same first, time. You know, <laughs> first, you know, right now, if they're selling their business, it, it may not be the best of times where over the next year to two years, uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll I'll jump in, Joe. So I think you know, that, uh, multiples as you're will building, multiples will be growing over the next few years. I think you're right. I think you're right, Don. I do think multiples will grow over the next few yeah. years. I and it's funny. Yeah. I got to tell you, so just a, a brief aside there, Don. I have yeah, tried to push multiples in the first quarter of every year for the last few years, and I often just get pushed back by buyers. But I think this is truly. Uh, the tide has changed and we will see those climbs. So, all right, yeah. sorry to interrupt, continue. So if you had the opportunity, if you know, you know, but I agree, if you had the opportunity and knew that multiples will increase over the next couple of years, then that this is the perfect time to get capital, grow your business, have a bigger business, and then on top of that, get a better multiple. It's mm -hmm. a home run. Yeah, you know, it's funny timing that we're recording this and, and, and when it's airing because, you know, just at the end of 2020, the, one of the last episodes that Mark and I did was uh, all about multiples and how much we hate them. You don't put multiples in your bank account, you put dollars in your bank account, but it's, right. you know, it's, it's a reality of what we deal with. The key thing for entrepreneurs, eventual exitpreneurs, if you will, to understand is a multiple of what? It's a multiple of sellers discretionary earnings Mm -hmm. And you got to really take your time, be decisive, be creative, be delicate on, on calculating that. Yeah. Because is missing a, a, a simple ad back like cash back monies from, you know, advertising and all expenses. You know, if you're getting $5,000 a month cash back, that's $60,000 a year times a multiple of four. You're losing, what, uh, $240,000 a year in value. So it's, it's details, guys. It's details. There's a lot to yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I could That's go. That's why we need people like you, long. Joe. Yeah. Well, I like it. That's I, why we I, need I you. really do. Uh, you know, um, everybody knows the advent, the growth of the aggregators, right? They, they're, they're people that have mm -hmm. figured out. People like your hedge fund guy, right? Hundred million dollars. They've figured yep. out that they can roll up these Amazon businesses 
buy them at a really low multiple, often direct from the seller, and immediately go from a, a two and a half multiple to a 10. They're getting a ton of instant equity. Well, the problem is yep. that they're buying them at what we call an ignorance discount. Number one, they're getting a low multiple. Number two, the seller's giving away a lots of inventory, which supersedes the, the fee that they'd be paying the advisor. Number three, the deal structure is not always great. Now, look, yeah. we, when, when the guys at Thras and they're, they're great people, by the way, if you don't know them, get to know them, really good people. There's a lot of folks like them now, but when they got their $780 million valuation yep. in the spring of 2020, we had sold them about 20% of their total transactions. And our clients that sold to them were happy. Wow. And in many times, our, our clients that sold to them needed to really sell to them because they had some hero skews and there was more risk. One skew mm -hmm. representing 70% of the revenue mm -hmm. or one skew that was in the electronic space and there was a giant fear of obsolescence. Sometimes it's right to sell yeah. to an aggregator. The most important thing I think is when you're going to sell to an aggregator, really try to avoid that ignorance discount. Do work with an advisor. And yes, I know that's self-serving, but it's the competitive market space. You don't want to just go to one. You want to go to all of them. And then mm -hmm. you don't want to just go to all of that. You want to go to the entire buyer marketplace so everybody's competing for your business. On average, guys, 47% of our transactions in 2020 sold at or above asking price. Wow. It's nice. not because we went to one aggregator. Yeah. It's because we went to them and everybody else. You price yeah. it right. You do the right thing. You, you, you help the entrepreneurs like you're helping them now yeah. with, with growth capital. And it's desperately needed. So I really appreciate that you guys are doing what you're doing. It's creative. It's, you're, you know, as I said, well, you should create a calculator on your website so you can do the math. You've already done it. You are brilliant, man. You're brilliant. I know. How about that? Yeah. I think it's fantastic. I think it's fantastic. Let me just add one thing. I've sold, you know, multiple businesses and uh, some mistakes I've made was one, uh, I sold way too early because it was more of an emotional sale. I took a beating one year and then I was making a fortune the next year and sold it. And if I held on for a few years, I would have made an absolute fortune. Yeah. My biggest mistake there was I didn't go through an advisor. And uh, I, I can get fill you in on some of the details of the stupid things that I did when I was, you know, 30 years old with this business. Yeah. And uh, I, I learned a great lessons. I don't know this stuff. Yeah. I'm not an expert in it. I'm pretty good, but I'm not an expert in it. And my lawyer wasn't an expert in it. I needed an advisor to guide me properly. And I, this is God's honest truth. Yeah. I would never do it again without. I, this, that fee is... This is not a paid endorsement, folks. It is what it is. It's a reality. We've, we've been out there. We've compared done to this. What I'd yeah, we sold. This. Yeah. I've built, I've bought, I've sold. Um, and, you know, I've said, I've got this. <laughs> like a teenager. Yeah. I got it, Dad. No problem. Yeah. And then I totally screwed it up and yeah. uh, lost the fortune. Uh, in my house, we call it uh, the the don't being a Jackie, right? We, we, you know, somebody in our house, I got two boys. I'm from New England. I'm a wise ass. And I say, don't be a jackass. And we've shortened it to don't be a Jackie. And the term, you know, I got this is what we're all susceptible to. We are mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. We work our tails off. We work hard. We work smart and we get lucky. You got to have the combination of all three. Yep. Yep. Um, and it sometimes inflates our egos to the point where we say, I got this. Yeah, and yeah. I think you said it earlier, you don't know what you don't know. And, you know, I, I'm just going to one, one add back example, and then we're going to wrap this up and tell where people need to go to meet you guys. Although we've already given out the URL and I want them to go to it. But one example is in terms of add backs and where people lose a ton of money when they sell directly because they say, I got this. A client that raises their prices by $4 a unit on their number one selling SKU six mm -hmm. months uh, before they sell their business. That's an ad back. How's that an ad back, Joe? They added $6. Well, you take the first six months of the year, you sell a thousand units a, a month for those six months times $4,000, that's $4,000, that's $24,000 in that six months. That's not on the books, but you've, you've improved the business. And in a Q of A process, Q of E process, that's a, a carry forward uh, growth there. It's an ad back, it's an adjustment to the seller's discretionary earnings in the ABEX schedule. Mm, very, very black and white and acceptable. Um, and, and I could tell you, most sellers that sell directly that say, I got this, have no clue that that can be done no and clue. is done, right? Not only that, if you've renegotiated your cost of goods sold, 
a couple of bucks a unit in the last six months. You got to go back to the, to the first six months of the year and, and make an adjustment because that renegotiation is carrying forward to the benefit of the new owner. Very so interesting. What we used to call it is, is, is instead of calling it seller's discretionary earnings when we were young and dumb, we called it owner's benefit. It just yeah. makes more sense, right? What's in it for me at the end of the day? What's my right. owner benefit? Uh, now it's you know, more sophisticated, it's complicated, it's seller's discretionary earnings, but you gotta go to what's the owner benefit and what's gonna carry forward to the new owner of the company and right. do those calculations. All right, I got my little pitch in there on ad. That's great information. That really is. That's that is. really important. I love ad backs. So Joe, I want to, I want to also mention something. So people might be thinking like, uh, how do we protect ourselves? Right. We we gave out a lot of information on what we don't do. Mm -hmm. So let, let's talk a little bit about the not so fun part of it. Cause I okay. think people need to have a full understanding of everything. All right. This so, is, this yeah. is where the inventory sits too long or somebody goes out of business and that kind of thing. Well, if the, if we see up front that the inventory is sitting too long, that's something we won't fund anyways. Right. So we'll, we'll take right. that out of there. They get a hundred percent of whatever they make off of that. But let's go with the scenario. We were kind of talking about like, you know, you, you have a hundred thousand in capital. We gave you a hundred thousand at, at the end of those 90 days, you ended up not making any money. Well, we didn't make any money, but let's go with a scenario that, you know, let's say of, a couple hundred thousand dollars you bought in inventory by the end of 90 days, you only had 150,000 back. Okay. So you actually took a 50,000 loss. Mm -hmm. I think people need to understand this, that as a crew me, you know, we're, we're going to try to help you obviously get out of that and get, you know, to a point where you are profitable. But if something happened and you're kind of done and you just want out, we will require that we get our hundred thousand first before you get your money back. Okay. We so, take priority. Yeah, we take priority. So I think people need to know that okay. because Your first you know that that is how yeah. we protect ourselves by not doing the background, you know, the uh, personal guarantees and things like that. Is that we will we will get paid first if there is a really bad scenario. We have not had that scenario that I know of nope. since I've been here. Uh, Don saying no. Okay. So uh, you know, because we are pretty good at making sure that we do a lot of dil due diligence up front, and you know, talking Fair a lot enough. with them. I've sold two seven-figure businesses, e-commerce businesses. We have an amazing team behind us uh, that are just absolutely incredible. Don, when it comes to finance, Don is absolutely incredible. I spent 22 years selling in e-commerce and only in the last like two years doing marketing. But of course, as you know, you're also doing marketing when you're running your own e-commerce business. That's okay. just part of it. 100%. So we have a great team that can help anybody out there. And uh, sure you, know, you can get a hold of Don and I. It's really easy. If you don't mind, Joe. Uh, so accrueme.com absolutely takes three minutes to fill out the form. Don spell that, spell or myself. For me just to get it right, accrueme. Go ahead and spell yeah, it. Yeah. So A C C R U E M E, accrueme.com. It's really simple. You can just uh, type that saw, in. Or I saw you're it. reading that, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> for those for those uh, listening instead of watching we do see uh, uh, rob's eyes shift to the left when he's reading the URL. <laughs> i don't want to mess it up <laughs> no, <I'm... laughs> that's great <laughs> next time i'm just gonna have a little thing to hold up that has it on there so anyways what you can do is go ahead and uh, go to crewme.com or uh, email Don or myself directly. It's really simple. Don, D-O-N at accrueme.com, A-C-C-R-U-E-M-E.com or Rob at accrueme.com. Either one of us be happy to help you out, uh, answer any questions. Uh, and Joe, wow, you, you're awesome. Yeah. You got great information. I want to get you on my podcast, man. Yeah, so this is great. That's some great info. I look forward to it. Hey, you know, just a thought came to me, uh, you know, maybe in another six to nine months before the end of the year, we ought to have not just you guys back on, but somebody that has had some great success in growing sure. their business yeah. because of the growth capital that it currently yeah. provides. We Absolutely. have some great stories. Brilliant. Let's keep that in mind, guys. I appreciate your time. Appreciate your stories. I appreciate your success that you're sharing and look forward to uh, hear more about it in the coming year, guys. Looking Thanks, forward. Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for your time, guys. Appreciate it. Really. And that's a wrap, guys. Thanks for listening to the Quiet Light Podcast. If you wouldn't mind, help Mark and I out. Do us a favor. Please give us a, uh, a ratings, a review on iTunes or Stitcher or whatever your uh, app is of choice. We'd greatly appreciate it. We're uh, finally starting to uh, ask for that in late 2020. Thanks for everybody that's gone ahead and given us a review and bumped our total review count up. Please help us out. Do that as well. We read and appreciate every single one of them. We'll see you next week, guys.